the last time we made a video, we proved the theorem, uh, theorem number two, which states that if the identity permutation, i, is expressed as a product of transpositions, then the number of transpositions in that product must be even. And in this video, we'll prove the theorem three, which states that a permutation can't be written as one product of an odd number of transpositions and another product of an even number of transpositions. Let's go ahead and get to that proof. Suppose the contrary. So we're doing another proof by contradiction. That there exists some permutation P which can be written as a product of an odd number of transpositions and can also be written as a product of an even number of transpositions. Then the same would be true of P inverse. Remember that a permutation is a bijective function. So it's one to one, it's on to. So that means there's an inverse permutation. So if it's true for P, it's true for P inverse. And uh, we could then write P as the product of an odd number of transpositions and P inverse as the product of an even number of transpositions. And since the identity is equal to P times P inverse, we will have written the identity as an odd number of transpositions. Since this contradicts theorem two, it must be that a permutation can't be written as an odd number of transpositions and an even number of transpositions. QED, proven. So therefore, as theorem, as theorem three states, permutation can only be written as a product of an odd number or an even number of transpositions, but not both. Okay, with theorem three established, we could choose to designate permutations that can be written as a product of an odd number, sorry, an even number of transpositions as even, and permutations that can be written as a product of an odd number of transpositions as odd. But Shilov, the author of the text I'm using as my main reference, chooses to define a permutation as even or odd according to how many inversions the permutation has. This is a convention that we will follow. We will establish one more proposition before moving on to a discussion of inversions and parity. Okay? And that proposition is proposition two. Every transposition can be expressed as the product of an odd number of adjacent transpositions. But that's next time.